You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom of priests for our God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you. Uh, can't see the people on the live stream, but we know you're there. You're just very much part of our congregation this morning. The uh, sound system is, seems to be working very well this morning. I'm saying that because of Nick, who's uh, over in Merrow operating the camera and the sound and everything. And uh, yesterday it was uh, barely audible, but today it's quite clear. And it's a great hymn that he had playing, and I will raise you up on the last day. And that's what uh, Jesus is talking about in the gospel today. A very well-known gospel from John uh, chapter 16. I'm saying this Mass this morning for the repose of the soul of Beatrice Kingsley Pereira. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Let us call to mind our sins, our unworthiness in the sight of God, and ask for his forgiveness, and so in some small way prepare ourselves to celebrate his holy mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are now seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, author of our freedom and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your Son's blood may have life through you and under your protection rejoice forever unharmed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood up in the synagogue at Antioch in Pisidia, held up a hand for silence, and began to speak. My brothers, sons of Abraham's race, and all of you who fear God, this message of salvation is meant for you. What the people of Jerusalem and their rulers did though they did not know it, was in fact fulfilled prophecies read on every Sabbath. Though they found nothing to justify his death, they condemned him and asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out everything that scripture foretells about him, they took him down from the tree and buried him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who had accompanied him from Galilee to Jerusalem. And it is these same companions of his who are now his witnesses before our people. We have come here to tell you the good news. It was to our ancestors that God made the promise, but it is to us, their children, that he has fulfilled it by raising Jesus from the dead. As scripture says in the first Psalm, you are my son, today I have become your father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the Psalm is, you are my son, it is I who have begotten you this day. You are my son, it is I who have begotten you today. 
It is I who have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. My son, it is, it is I, I who have, have, begotten, you who have begotten you this day. Ask, and I will bequeath you the nations. Put the ends of the earth in your possession. With a rod of iron, you will break them. Shatter them like a potter's jar. You are my son. son it is, is I, I, the Lord, who has begotten you this day. Now, O kings, understand. Take warning, rulers of earth. Serve the Lord with awe and trembling. Pay him your homage. You are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. Please stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. This Gospel text today must be the one text that I've preached on so, so many times during my ministry. Why? Because it's often chosen for funerals. Why funerals? Because it deals with the hereafter, heaven. As the old saying goes, when you get older, you tend to speak more and more about the hereafter. Like going into the kitchen or to the bedroom and saying, and stopping still and saying, what did I come in here after? You've had the experience as well. Funerals focus our minds on what happens to us when we die. We try not to think about this normally in our everyday life, but that focuses our attention. What's happened to that person in the coffin? What's going to happen to me when I get to that stage? But we need to speak about this topic more openly, and not only when confronted by someone's transition from this life into the next world, Jesus often spoke about heaven, and today's reading is one of those occasions. Today, Jesus speaks very clearly. In his Father's house, there are many rooms, and he's going to prepare a place for us, each one of us. We seem to have lost the thrill and the excitement of talking about heaven. But if you think about it, the reason why Jesus was born died and resurrected was to make heaven possible for each one of us. Isn't that an amazing and comforting truth? Jesus has opened up the doors of heaven to each of us. The Catechism of the Catholic Church puts it so well. Heaven is the ultimate end and fulfilment of the deepest human longings, the state of supreme, definitive happiness. Most of us fear being too heavenly-minded in case we are no earthly good. 
we also retreat from the idea of being too presumptuous, despite the fact that Jesus promised that we would be with him in heaven. We therefore must think about it, pray about it, and yes, long for it. Heaven is our home, after all. It is where we want to be found, and God willing, where we will be for eternity. Poor old Thomas, who didn't know where the Lord was going or how to get there. I love Thomas. He doubted, he doesn't always understand, and he often expresses our thoughts and feelings for us to the Lord. But unlike Thomas, we know Jesus was returning to his father's house and that the way to his father's house is not a physical way. We can't do it by satnav. It's a spiritual way as the other world is spiritual and so are we spiritual. It is through Jesus and only through Jesus with the Holy Spirit as our spiritual satnav. Without them, we will be truly lost when we die. Think about it. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us that God has made everything beautiful in its time. He has set eternity in the human heart. And Augustine tells us that you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. We're all searching. We're all groping our way towards heaven and towards our Lord Jesus Christ. We have two people with us this morning who are attending our RCIA course. I won't name them or ask them to put their hands up and embarrass them. The course which helps non-Christians to be baptised into the Catholic Church or other baptised Christians to come and join us in the Catholic Church. Sometimes it's also used for baptised adults, Catholics, who have not been confirmed as a way of refreshing their faith and being confirmed. And we're most happy to have them with us, to join us on our journey, our common pilgrimage to heaven. All humanity has been created to share in the life of God and to be content and happy in his presence. We have to shake off the notion that longing for heaven is mere wish fulfilment. It isn't. It's basic Christianity. Let's get a heavenly perspective, and cultivate our own vision of heaven. After all, where else are we going? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, all, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, after supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, <clears throat> as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Pius X, St. Edward, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, great to see you here this morning and all those people who are on the live stream. And thank you for your feedback, which continues to come in. Reassures us that you're there and we're not talking to ourselves when the church is empty. Uh, we can be guilty of that sometimes. And you see, uh, Monsignor Tony came in uh, uh, just before Mass. He'd uh, been to say the school Mass, so that's a regular feature now on a Friday morning. I, I did it last week, he's doing it this week. Um, we've also got taught masses for uh, certain years in St. Peter's School, and I've got one of those, uh, we've got two or three this afternoon actually, where we actually pause during key stages in the mass. We don't interrupt the mass, but where we can put comments in and explain to people who are brand new to the mass what it's all about. So we, we do that every year around about this time in the schools. So the pace of life continues to get quicker and quicker. And our baptism courses are filling up. Um, if you're in the queue for baptism or your child for baptism, um, be patient. We've got just under 100 people waiting. So um, I'm, I can't do it with a hose pipe, but uh, we're going to do it uh, in, in several groups, probably three families at a time to start with, and then we'll move to six when our limits go up. But uh, the three families of 10 is 30, which is what we're allowed in, in the church at the moment for those occasions. Life events, I think they call them, the government calls them. Anyway, the, the, the thing is, the, the work of Christ's kingdom goes on and uh, nothing like a pandemic will stop it. We'll get round it some way and uh, push the kingdom forward. And that's the responsibility of each of us in our own lives, in our own, uh, our own daily lives. There will be... Um, Evensong, or not Evensong, Evening Prayer or Vespers this evening at 6 o'clock as usual. Um, tomorrow being Saturday, there won't be any, but there will be the 6 o'clock Vigil Mass here, of course. And Sunday, Vespers, Sung Vespers, will be here at 6.30. Or the rest of the week, Monday to Friday, it's at uh, 6 o'clock. Look forward to you joining us, or some of you, then. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.